Hey guys, very good morning. You are watching my YouTube channel CloudX India and my name is Mithlesh Singh. So guys, this is the third session of AWS security rules or you can say the security uh, firewall, virtual firewall security rules, okay? In last two sessions, we discussed about what is security group, how does it work, where you can apply and what is the best way of doing this, right? So we did uh, so many testing in last uh, last video, right? So if you didn't watch it, I'll suggest go and watch it to get the more clarity on it. Okay. And uh, in today's session, we'll talk about what is network access control list. How does it work? Okay. So, uh, okay. So let's not wait and see what it is. How does it work? So first we have to understand what it is. What is the network access control list? So NACL is one of uh, optional layer of security for your VPC. Okay. That act as a firewall. And it controls inbound and outbound traffic and it can apply at a time to one subnet or more than one subnet. It's up to you, right? Okay, so NACL operate at the subnet level. Okay, so I have uh, one picture also for more clarity. Okay, take an example. This is your uh, VPC. We have created one VPC. Okay, and under this VPC, there is one subnet created. And this subnet you have created for your EC2 virtual machine. All right, so this is for your virtual machine. So the NACL always apply at the subnet level. You have to apply at the subnet level. So this is clear. The next one, it supports both allow and deny rule. So in the NACL, there are two things. So one is the allow and other one is deny, okay? So you have to manage uh, any traffic, right? Based on your requirement, you want to allow, you can allow. If you want to deny, you can deny it. It's a completely up to you. So manageability is possible, allow and deny. It is a stateless. It is stateless means, so if you allow, take an example. So take an example, this is my Windows Server, okay? And there are around 200 Windows servers are running into this uh, VPC, okay? And there are some users sitting in on-premises. They want to access this Windows Server, okay? They want to take the RDP connection. For the RDP, what you have to do is you have to allow port number 3389 as an incoming request, okay? You have to allow 3389 as a incoming request. If you have decided to use NACL and if you allow 3389 port, right? So since this is associated with this, so it will be applicable to all windows running under this subnet. And users sitting in this location, whatever the IP you have allowed, they can access all these systems they can access the RDP, okay? But this is a stateless, remember. So once you allow incoming requests, you have to think about the outgoing as well. In the outgoing, you have to define some ephemeral port so that once system respond to the user, right? It, the request outbound traffic will go smoothly and respond to the users. So this is that is the reason it is a stateless. If you have only allow incoming requests, but you deny each and everything in outbound, so this will not work. User can get into the environment, but system will not respond to them. So they, that is the two way, uh, basically three hand sick mechanism work in this uh, cases. The next one, it process rules in number order when deciding whether to allow traffic. Okay, so I have another chart. So take an example. This is your uh, environment you have allowed for each and every users. So you allowed uh, traffic, incoming traffic 3389 for, uh, not 3389, take an example, you have allowed everything for all the users. So I have another seat here. So 
guys once you go and create the security group or by default it creates right so not the custom one by default one security group network access control list create so it creates two rule by default so just uh, focus on the highlighted one so one it create and it assign the number default number this is the rule number which is the 100 and it allow all traffic all protocol all the port ranges to the all users to the all ranges right so it is 0 0 0 slash 0 it is allowed and then other rule is which is uh, indicating the rule number star and the same conditions are there but the request type is it's a uh, the rule type is deny here okay so this is the default rule applied to your knuckle once the default knuckle is created during your vpc and subnet creation okay so as per the slide right so it is saying it process rules in number order when deciding whether to allow traffic okay take an example you have there are one of the users okay sitting in your on premises so i'll go back to my screen again so this is a user okay and this user you do not want to allow this user to access the rdp connection so what you have to do is you have to create a rule like this you have to create a rule and assign a number of this rule so take an example we have assigned 10 number and we have defined protocol rdp 3389 ip of this user and request will be denied request will be denied it means what happens once user try to access the server once user try to access the system so what happened it reached to the knuckle first vpc and then vpc then it it reached to the knuckle okay and then subnet so once it it reached to the knuckle what happened knuckle will verify the order the rule number it verify oh what is the ip address it is a 172.16.2.10 it verify the table my table number first table number is the 10 protocol is rdp port is this and source is 172.16.2.10 and at the same time when it receive when it match the number and it see the action what is the action it is deny it will deny however in the bottom if you see there is allow rule but it will not come to the next it fine to deny on the first rule it will deny it means it works in the order if rule number 10 has the deny so it will not verify rule number 11. so in another example i have mentioned the same range and same ip and i mentioned to allow so since it work on the rule number basis okay the least number will get the high priority okay so once it reads the table number 10 and it is mentioned deny it will not go and further verify any other rule however in the next level next rule number i have allowed but it will not come to this number and verify it okay whatever the first number you have defined either it is allow or deny it will by default deny the users okay so it work in order like uh, numbers order second it apply on subnet and all instance under same subnet means as i said so there are 200 systems running into this under this subnet we have deployed okay and if you allow 3389 okay so it will not applicable on a single system it will be applicable to all system running inside this particular subnet so that is something you have to be very plan very wisely okay when you are going to use the knuckle and even amazon doesn't suggest right they don't suggest to use the knuckle to allow port okay so that is that is the reason they have mentioned it it, it is an optional layer of security so okay so for better understanding i have created a flow chart let's see what it is and how does it work so take an example you have multiple virtual machine you have a subnet you have a vpc okay and this is one of the users okay 
and this user is trying to access any of this virtual machine or this virtual machine so what happened once the user sent the request it reads to the vpc and as soon as it reads to the vpc what happened so first knackle come into the picture knackle verify whether this particular system is allowed or not so this is the default rule i have created here so once it reads to the rules so since this is the incoming request okay so it verify right verify rule number 100 verify the tables okay type protocol port and source is 00 and it is allowed what happened since the first number is allow so it will not go to the second and it simply allow users to access the system okay and since this is a knackle is applied to the your subnet level so whatever the systems are inside this particular subnet deployed it all will be accessible or this user can access to any of the systems running under this particular subnet this subnet okay so this is one of the security layer security group which work at the instance level okay so you can see i have applied if you ha i have applied the security group on these two instances right so it will be applicable to these two instances not to whole subnet or virtual machine running inside the subnet and if i do not apply this security group on these sys three systems so it will not apply to this however knackle will apply right it work at the network subnet level and apply to all systems running inside your uh, this particular subnet so the next is take an example so once this user connected to this virtual machine or this so once this virtual machine respond to the users what happened so this response known as the outgoing and in the outgoing the request again the direction it will go to the subnet and from the subnet right once it reaches to the from the subnet when it go outside right then network access control list come again into the picture and network access control list will monitor each and every traffic it monitor the incoming and outgoing both okay so if under the outgoing it is allowed then it will let user to connect the system if it is take an example if you have mentioned deny here right or you have created another rule and you mentioned deny so this network access control list will not let anyone or to respond to this end user okay so this is the outbound rule so the next one is uh, we'll see the comparison between security group and knackle okay so i have created a table for you so the first column is the network security security group and other one is the network access control list right so security group will go one by one security group operates at instance level however knackle operates at subnet level it support only allow rule it supports both allow and deny it is a stateful a stateful it means so i'll go back to the this screen a stateful it means if you are using sg so sg is applied at the instance level and if you have allow incoming request for 3389 and you blocked rdp 3389 at outgoing it doesn't matter for it or you blocked each and everything doesn't matter if you have allow this user to take the remote of this so this system will respond it is known as the stateful it doesn't matter right whether you have block other connection or not okay so the next one is but your knackle is stateless as i said so you have to define your outgoing traffic as well if you want to allow so you have to allow it if you have disable like deny it so it will not work it evaluates all rules before deciding whether to allow traffic it verify all the rules however 
Network access control list process rule in number order. In number order, so if you have seen this table, so you remember, right? It go as per the number. It verify if user is like RDP is deny for this IP address, right? And number is the lowest number. So it will not go and verify any further rules. It will deny. It's very simple. It apply at instance level, okay? And this is apply at the subnet, okay? And all instance running under same subnet, okay? So guys, uh, thanks for watching. I'll uh, prepare another video for demonstration, right? Uh, and I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe, share, and give a thumbs up, okay? Thanks for watching. Okay, we'll meet very soon. Thank you.